Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be doing my mid-season APAC power rankings, the Asia region of course, power rankings. There are seven teams in Asia. I will be giving my own personal power rankings for those seven teams. Uh, now I know I said originally this video was going to go out on Friday, this past Friday, and then a video came out. Uh, I uh, I took a, a couple of days just to, to have a little break and do some other stuff with the way everything's going on right now and, and everything happening in the world. I just, I wanted a little bit of time to reflect on things and, and be a little more uh, uh, calm and, and respectful of things that were going on. I didn't feel like putting out a video, um, but uh, I'm going to put it out today. So here we are with the 2020 uh, Mid-Season Asia Pacific Power Rankings. Now, seven teams in Asia. Pretty difficult to, to rank them in some spots. Uh, not a very easy uh, region to look at, but I wanted to uh, give my thoughts and, and, and tell you my rankings. So let's start at number seven, the team that I have at the bottom of the rankings. I have the London Spitfire. Now, I've actually been decently impressed by the London Spitfire now. Putting them at seven when you could argue that a team like Chengdu should maybe be in seven when London did play and beat Chengdu. It's it's a valid criticism. And honestly, part of me says maybe you're right. Maybe London should be ahead of Chengdu. But London has had some very mixed uh, results other than their win against Chengdu. Chengdu has had some decent performances against New York. They had a good performance against Guangzhou. Um, they have had some some decent wins since they've come into the the season london's only win since coming into asia was against chengdu they haven't won in several weeks now uh, it was the first game they played since coming back and my ultimate issue with london is i don't really know what their identity is i don't really know what they like to do i don't really know what they're good at i haven't really figured london out yet and that's really why I have them in this position. I don't really know what London is. I don't know what their, their their ideal composition is. I don't know what heroes they really like to play. I don't know what heroes they benefit from playing. I know that Glister is incredible and can do very well on a hero like Ash. We've seen Aldo play pretty well on your May. But as a whole, this London team is very up in the air. I don't know what to expect from them week in and week out. I don't think they're going to remain the seventh best team in the Asia region. I actually think they're better than a number of teams in North America, and I definitely think they could pass a team like Chengdu, as well as maybe some of the other teams in the region uh, as the season progresses in Asia. But overall, London to me is the seventh team uh, here. I think that'll change, uh, but right now I have them at seventh. But of course... We have to see what this London team is able to do as the season progresses. At number six, I have the Chengdu Hunters. Now, I see record for Chengdu much worse than what we've seen out of the London Spitfire. They are four and ten minus ten. But you know what you're getting out of Chengdu. They like to run a lot of Wrecking Ball Dive. They like to be able to run Jinmu on the Fara if possible, or they've uh, been playing on an Echo recently. Among has looked a lot better on a lot of these other tank heroes other than just the Wrecking Ball and the Reinhardt. He's looked pretty good on, on the Orisa. Oh, well, I don't even though they really don't play that much Orisa. He's looked pretty good on the Winston, um, all things considered, based on where he had been. This is a team who I think is good at what they do. When they can't run what they want to run, I don't think they look as good. But they are able to run a composition that suits their strengths and that typically performs at a pretty high level. Um... They have some okay wins, obviously. They have, uh, I believe, one win against Shanghai uh, and two wins against Guangzhou. Three wins against Guangzhou. I don't actually know what all their wins are. That's where I'm actually, like, I have no idea. Oh, they beat Vancouver. That's right. They beat Vancouver before they left. So they have a win against Vancouver. Two wins against Guangzhou, I think. Uh, and winning against Shanghai. That sounds about right, because they have not yet beaten the Hangzhou Spark. Um, this is a team who I think is, is 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 not great. They're not incredible, but I think... Oh, no, they beat Seoul. That's right. Guangzhou, Seoul, Vancouver, and 
Shanghai. So they've beaten a, a number of teams in the region. I think that's really why I, I put them ahead of London. I've seen Chengdu beat a lot of the teams in the region. Even when teams are coming in and out of the region. I think Chengdu has done a lot of uh, promising things. And I actually thought they played very well against New York in the tournament. Uh, I thought that Mali played very well. I think this is a team who is improving as as the weeks go on. I think they're they're getting a lot better at running more compositions and and working new heroes into the rotation every so often. Um, that as the season progresses and we're in hero pools and we're in a more chaotic type of play style, this is a Chengdu team that I think is getting better. Uh, I think that they are a team who has a much lower ceiling than all the other teams. Um, I think they can have very good weeks, but I think that they they rarely hit their high, and even when they do hit their high, they still have to really fight in a lot of those cases to have a, a win under their belt. I like what we've seen out of them. Uh, they're still very much the same team we would see from them last season, but uh, I'm not confident enough in this team to put them ahead of number six in the Asia region. I think there's a pretty decent gap between six and five. At number five, I have the Hangzhou Spark. Now, you'll notice I have a couple extra things here in the in the notes that I want to kind of touch on here. The Hangzhou Spark are an interesting team. I think that the Hangzhou Spark's biggest problem going into the uh, month of May, or that we had seen throughout the month of May, was they struggled with their flex DPS. Adora didn't have a lot of uh, great performances on a number of heroes, though his, his uh, Echo was looking pretty good. But they acquire Architect as a new Flex DPS player, of course, coming from the San Francisco Shock. Someone who has played alongside a number of these players before, of course, most notably playing alongside Godsby. So you have a, a, a DPS duo here with Architect and Godsby who have played together in the past, who know each other's strengths, who know how the others play. Uh, they should work very well together. I think this is a Hangzhou Spark team that can and possibly will be better than a team like the Guangzhou Charge as the season progresses possibly better than a Seoul Dynasty, possibly better than a New York Excelsior, possibly better than a Shanghai Dragons in a very specific type of scenario, right? This is Hangzhou Spark team that I think will get better. The biggest problem they face right now is the fact that Gu Shui has to leave the team in Korea, which is where they are right now, to go back to China because of his visa. He'll have to get a new visa, he'll have to get his visa renewed. So because of that, I look at this Hangzhou Spark team and I say they may struggle temporarily without Gushui. We don't know who they're going to have at main tank. I know they uh, asked to basically not play for a time. I would imagine it's just like a week. That's probably all they can be given. Um, and they might bring in a main tank on a 14-day contract. They may have to just sign another main tank for however long they need him. Whatever it is, this is a team who is going to potentially struggle a bit without Gushui. But once Gushui is back, I think the Spark team will be very good. But... They are at five because we haven't seen them play at that high level yet. We don't know what they are capable of when Architect is in the roster until we have seen Architect in the roster. We haven't seen that yet, so I keep the Hangzhou Spark at five because I think they have a very high ceiling now. Uh, their record is six and seven minus four, so not awful. It's not an insurmountable um, win-loss record with an awful differential. But I need to see what the Hangzhou Spark are capable of doing long term uh, before I start to give them uh, higher spots here on this power ranking. Next is a uh, probably the, the spot on this list where most people will uh, disagree with me. At number four, I have the Guangzhou Charge. Now... I only put the Nero visa situation in the notes because that's the recent one and that's coming up. Of course, there's also the Neptuno visa situation where he is not with the team right now because he is in Spain. Why do I have the Guangzhou charge at number four when they were the team with the best record in May uh, in the Asia region? They're nine and six, minus one, pretty good overall record. What is it about this team that I don't believe in over a team? Well, over teams we'll get into later, but most notably New York, I think, is the one that most people are going to look at. I look at the Guangzhou Charge, and what I see from them is a team that, at their best, is pretty good uh, to good. I don't think they're a great team. I don't think they are a team who has the championship potential. I don't think they have that. 
Uh, I think they're a solid team. I think they're a good team. I don't see them being a team who could challenge a Shanghai, challenge a San Francisco, challenge a Philadelphia, and potentially win uh, big games down the stretch. And a lot of that comes down to the fact that I think we have seen this roster at its best, and I don't think they have performed at a level that I would deem to be particularly uh, elite or excellent. There are other teams who I will talk on or touch on in a little bit who I think are potentially uh, better, even if they're not playing as well right now because we're not seeing them at their best. We're not seeing them at their highest potential. I don't think the Guangzhou Charge are going to get much better, if any better at all, than what we've seen with them now, other than when Neptuno returns. I just don't think the Guangzhou Charge are that good of a team where they will have a much better you know, later half of the season because they've just become an, a better team. I think they are what they are. I don't think they have really any chance of being significantly better than what they are. I don't have a ton of faith in the team's ability to win big games, um, and that's why I have them where I have them. I think there is a, an argument to be made for the Guangzhou Charge to be a top three team in, in the Asia region, but overall season performance is kind of what I've been taking into account to kind of break some of these areas that I view as somewhat ties, you know, the four and three and two spot are all very close in my opinion. But ultimately I put the Guangzhou charge at four because I haven't seen them have big wins and I haven't have seen them have great performances against good teams on good days. Um, and I'll talk about that a little bit more in a second here, but this is a team who is going to be in danger, I think, when Nero does have to go back to the U.S. to renew his visa. I think that will be a problem for this team because they're not going to have the player who I believe is the carry for this team and who is by far the best player on this team. I think without Nero, this team is not nearly as good. And I think we are looking at a Guangzhou charge team that, though good, uh, is just short of being what I would consider a great Number three, where I think people may disagree with me, is the New York Excelsior. Now, this is a team whose overall season performance, for me, is really what helped them get pushed over the edge above the Guangzhou charge. They're 10-3 and three plus 18. They have the fourth best record in the Overwatch League overall. I believe they still have the fourth best differential in the league overall, uh, if not the third best, but I believe it's the fourth best. And if you look at this team and you look at everything about them, there are a number of things that I think you can really look at and pin as this team's kind of strengths and weaknesses. But overall, I think the NYXL have a higher ceiling than the Guangzhou Charge. And I think the New York Excelsior are in a very similar level right now to the Guangzhou Charge, despite the fact that the NYXL have major pieces missing from this team. Um, they have no... Uh, sp hit scan specialized player such as Nene. Nene, though the rest of the team is in Asia, is in New York because he had a surgery and has been unable to travel to be with the team ever since he had that surgery. So that I think has been a big part of what has changed some of their compositions and what has impacted some of the stuff they've been able to run. But the big, the big sticking point to me for the New York Excelsior is that their struggles on the tank line have been apparent. Hotba has not played at the level that I think most people expected him to. I think Hotba has struggled so far this season. He and Mono do not have great chemistry, do not have great synergy, and I'd like to see if that is something that we see a, a change in in the future. If New York shows a clear lack of ability to develop stronger tank synergy, whether that be by subbing out Hotba and putting in Bianca, uh, whether that be bringing in another player, whatever it may be, then I think New York definitely deserves to be dropped below a team like Guangzhou. But New York is at a point where they has, they still have some players on the bench, right? You don't really get a ton of bench players from Guangzhou. Yeah, you have Chara, you have Eileen, you have Wea, but those are players who aren't really playing. New York has Bianca, who I think could step up and, and really help this team's tank problems, potentially, where I think their biggest problem is that need. Uh, Guangzhou's biggest problems aren't with any one position, I think. I think it's just that they would need to bring in other players from outside to 
boost some of their weaker areas. New York has an answer to a problem on the bench. Whether or not that is the answer or not has yet to be seen. There's a lot of question marks surrounding New York. I think it's very possible that New York does not continue to perform at a level that would have me consider them the third best team in Asia. But right now, I really like what we have seen out of New York. Um, I think that there is a lot of potential for this New York team. I think once Nene is back with the team, uh, I think that will help them out a lot. I think that'll allow them to run more compositions. I also think that this team will become better as a whole, as this team is able to synergize more, as this tank line is able to build more synergy, connect more, play together more, and if possible, just make some substitutions to really kind of cement that. This is a team, like I said, I think they could drop below number three very easily. I think Hangzhou could surpass them. I think Guangzhou could surpass them. I also could see them climbing up to number two. Um, and even in, in a wild scenario, climbing up to number one. But I think that this is a very good team who, even when they are at their weakest, are still a team who I would argue is equal to or better than the Guangzhou Charge uh, and some of these other weaker teams in the region. That is a big reason why I have them at number three. Number two is a weird one, of course, based on record and overall performance this season. But I have the Seoul Dynasty. Team is 6-4 and four with a minus 2 record. They were the runner-ups for the May Melee Asia Pacific Tournament. Obviously, they added Slime recently, so a new support player to potentially play uh, a lot for this team and be a big part of this team's potential future um, plans. Seoul is a very weird team. They're very up and down. At their highs, they're one of the best teams in the region. At their lows, they're the worst team in the, in the region. And they've had a lot of problems with certain heroes. They don't run Echo well at all. And they struggle in non-double shield netas because I don't think they feel very confident in their flex tank play if it's not Sigma. This is a team that I think needs to add some more players and bring in some people to fill in some of these spots where they're struggling. But overall, I think that this team has shown that their highs are very good. They almost beat Shanghai in the, in the APEC uh, May Melee. And they have some of the very, very, very talented players on this roster. You bring in Slime, you boost this roster in the position that was arguably their weakest, though Flex Tank is probably their weakest since they don't play Michelle very often, though he's been getting more playtime slowly as the season has progressed. This team, we obviously know that they excel in Double Shield. It is where they play the best, and, and that's no surprise. Um, because they like to run Marvel Gesture as much as they can. I think there's been some weird coaching decisions for this team, things that I think should probably change if they want to really uh, impress and become a stronger team as time goes on. Uh, you know, decisions like if you're running Reinhardt, do you run Marvel or Gesture? They seem to think it's Gesture. Uh, people on the outside seem to think it's Marvel. So if it is Marvel, um, you know, let us see that. If it isn't Marvel, let us see that. Um, you know, if, if they believe in Jester as their main tank, well, then that's who they want to have. There's a lot of questions about that, but I think this whole dynasty have shown that their height is very, very high. Arguably the best uh, team in the region at their peak, but they don't often hit that peak, which I think is why they are losing the games that they're losing and why I have them at number two. Because though I think they can argue uh, that they're the best team in the region, they haven't shown enough results for me to say that that is true. Finally, at number one, it is the Shanghai Dragons. That is no real surprise. 14-2 record plus 26 differential. They are the APAC May Melee champions. They're a really good team. There's no denying that. Uh, I think everybody will have the Shanghai Dragons as number one in Asia and possibly the number one team in the league as a whole. They are good at every part of the roster. They have shown that they are dominant in every match they've played, pretty much. And I think that they are just incredible. I mean, they reverse swept the Seoul Dynasty in the in the finals. They have some very, 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 very solid players who are arguable MVP and Rookie of the Year candidates. Your Fearlesses, your Lips, your Voids, uh, your Fletas. These are players who are having great seasons. 
this is a team who is really 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 changing what we're seeing in the overwatch league and what we're what we're seeing from teams in general and they are arguably the best team we have ever seen in the overwatch league in a single season uh i, I think you can make that argument potentially so shanghai dragons number one rightfully so uh not really much to say they're very good they have stayed very good i expect that to remain the case throughout the remainder of the season so here's a real quick recap of where i have my rankings as i end off this video for you all if you enjoyed this video consider liking and subscribing for more stuff like this in the future you will get the north america power rankings on friday so stay tuned for that comment down below your thoughts on my power rankings if you agree if you disagree uh your own power rankings whatever you want I would love to hear from you in the comments down below. But with that being said, I am going to get out of here. Thank you once again. Hope you all stay safe, stay healthy. And uh, yeah, until next time, bye-bye.